Hey everyone, my name is Brandon Robertson, and I just wanted to take a moment to come to you guys and just talk to you about something the Lord's been laying on my heart recently. And that is the topic of unity in the body of Christ, unity in the church. Um, I just posted a blog on this on my blog, um, which is called For Christ and for the Church, or um, Christo et Ecclesiae in Latin. And on my blog, uh, my post was called um, Orthodoxy and Unity, Why the Division? And in this blog, what I address is this conviction that God has been laying on my heart as someone studying for pastoral ministry. Why is there so much division in the body of Christ? Why are the people who are supposed to be the most united some of the most divided? And this conviction really comes true for me coming back down here to Chicago to study at Moody. Um, if you walk out on the South Street, which is the street Moody is on, it's very easy to see walking down the South Street uh, about six to ten churches. Christian churches, not mosques, not Buddhist temples, churches. All bearing the name of Jesus Christ, all claiming the gospel of Jesus Christ, and yet all of them are divided. I mean, right down the street down here, we have Holy Name Cathedral, which is the uh, the home church, the home parish of the Archdiocese of Chicago for the Roman Catholic Church. And then right down here on LaSalle, we have the Diocese of the Midwest for the uh, Orthodox Church in America. And then we have LaSalle Street Church, and we have um, the Church of the Ascension, the Episcopal Church, all within not even a half of a mile from each other. And the problem here is, is what message does this send to the world about Jesus Christ? What message does this send to the world about the gospel, about this Holy Spirit that's supposed to bind us together? We have been called by Jesus to be one as he is one with the Father. In Christ, we are one. In our salvation, we are united with Jesus Christ. We become one in him and one with him. And in Christ, as we are one with him, he in us and we in him, he has called us, the church, to be as one body. And yet we divide over minor, not matters of orthodoxy, things like infant baptism, charismatic gifts, uh, women in ordination, things that aren't matters of orthodoxy, things that the scriptures do not explicitly teach about. We divide over them. And I, for one, am tired of division because I see the effect of what it's doing to the gospel. It's hindering the gospel from going forward. I believe salvation is of the Lord. I believe the gospel is ultimately a work of God. I believe salvation is a work of God. But Jesus said that when he's lifted up, when he is glorified, he draws all men to himself. And I firmly believe that Jesus Christ is glorified when we are unified as his people. One of my favorite passages in all of the Gospels is John 17, where Jesus says this in verse 20. I do not ask for these only, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one, just as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they may be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. Did you hear what Jesus prayed? That when the church is united, the world would believe that God had sent him, that Jesus is the Messiah. When the church, when his people, when his disciples became one and were unified and displayed the unity that he had with the Father and that we have in Jesus, that he would be seen by the world and that people would be drawn to him and the gospel would go forth in power. Unity is what Jesus is talking about here, that we may be one. And yet today, especially, especially in evangelical Protestant Christianity, we are divided. We don't fellowship with churches that have women pastors. We don't fellowship with churches that don't hold to our either Calvinistic or Arminian view. Cessationalist churches don't associate with charismatic churches. Baptist churches don't associate with Presbyterian churches. And yet at the core, we all affirm the orthodox doctrines of the Christian faith. If you can affirm the Apostles' Creed, you are an orthodox Christian. 
What is the Apostles' Creed? Uh, I wish I could recite it. I actually have it right here. Okay. It's actually, uh, there's two main creeds in our faith, the Apostles' Creed and the Nicene Creed. Both are basically saying the same thing. And if you can affirm either one, you can affirm both of them. This is the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and of all things, visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things remain, who for us and for our salvation came down from heaven, was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, was made man, was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate, he suffered and was buried, and on the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. He shall come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceed from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke through the prophets, and I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life in the world to come. If you can affirm that, you are orthodox. You are part of the family of God. And guess what? The amount of Christians who can affirm that creed is huge. Roman Catholics affirm that creed every week in Mass. Presbyterians affirm that creed every week in their worship service. Lutherans, Evangelicals, Baptists, Charismatics, Eastern Orthodox, Pentecostal, we all can affirm this creed. And if we can affirm this for thousands of years, that has been the mark of Orthodoxy. That was compiled by the early church to say this is what the Bible teaches. This is what Jesus came to teach. If you can believe this, you are one with us. We are family. We can worship together, we can preach together, we can study together, we can live with each other, we can help one another, we can love one another, and we can go into the world proclaiming the gospel with one another. And yet, this unity that we've been called to has been lost by our selfishness and our foolishness. For those of you who are complementarian, who believe that women cannot hold women uh, leadership roles in the church, such as elder or pastor, guess what? egalitarians, those who believe women can be pastors, we're Christians too. For those of us like me who are reformed and Calvinistic, as hard as it might be sometimes, Arminians are our brothers and sisters too. For those of you like me who baptize infants, and for those of you who believe that baptism is by immersion only, it didn't say in the creed, and the church has debated about this for many years, and it doesn't matter, we can disagree. Mark Driscoll used this model, he said, that there are state boundaries and then there are national boundaries. State boundaries are in orthodoxy. So in orthodoxy, we have this Christian country, this Christian nation, the kingdom of God. And within the kingdom of God, there are some who are egalitarian, some who are complementarian, some who are charismatic, some who are cessationalist, some who are uh, Puedo Baptist, some who are baptism by immersion only. And they're all within this Christian nation. They're all believers in Christ. They're all Orthodox. And we can fight over these things in Orthodoxy. We can stay as one nation united, doing ministry for the gospel and for the glory of Jesus with one another. We can argue about these and, and bump heads about these things. But these are not things we should shoot each other for. We shouldn't go to war over charismatic gifts. We shouldn't go to war over women pastors. Now, there are country boundaries. People who deny the Trinity, that is a denial of Orthodox Christianity, and you are outside of the Christian faith denying the Trinity. People who deny that Jesus Christ is the only way, the truth, and the life, they are outside the country of Christianity, and they deserve to be shot, not physically, I'm not advocating violence, but they are outside of the bounds of Christianity. That is where we divide. Somebody who says salvation is by works and not by faith and grace alone, in Christ alone. That is outside orthodoxy, and that we divide. That division is okay, because that is not a division in the church. That is a division of believers and unbelievers. But Jesus Christ prayed for us that we would be as one. It's time that we swallow our pride and live out this prayer. Working, serving, loving, preaching for the glory of Jesus, the building up of the saints, and the evangel evangelization of the world. We need each other, and we are called to be one. We have one faith, one Lord, one baptism, one spirit in us all. So whether you're a male 
or female, a, a Jew or a Greek, a charismatic or a cessationist, a Calvinist or an Arminian. You are my brother and sister if you can affirm this faith. If you can pronounce that Jesus Christ is your Lord and you are saved by his sacrifice on the cross and his resurrection from the grave and can affirm the creeds of our faith, you are my brother or sister. And I love you. And we need to do ministry with one another. We need to glorify Jesus with one another. We need to worship with one another and strive to see an end to division in the church and a radical unity through the power of Jesus Christ and his gospel for his glory because Christ is most glorified when he is most seen through the unity in the church. He prayed, may they be as one so that the world would know that you have sent me. My prayer for the church, my conviction, my passion is that we would be one even as Jesus is one with us and one with the Father. Thank you for listening to my rant. I pray you're blessed. And I pray that you too would catch the vision for unity in the body of Christ. May the Lord richly bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and may he allow you to dwell in unity by the power of his Holy Spirit.